we're back with Focus Delaware. The winner for gift certificate for dinner for two to the University and Whisk Club is Agnes Heckman of the 1200 block of Rodman Road, Canby Park. Congratulations, Agnes. We'll be sending you out that gift certificate. You'll enjoy that. Our next guest is Norm Barron, Delaware's chief magistrate of the JP Court System. Born in 1942 in South Orange, New Jersey, Judge Barron comes from a family of lawyers. Three brothers practicing law, one a twin, twin brother in Wilmington, Delaware. His father's a retired, retired admiralty lawyer. His maternal grandfather was a federal district court judge, so as you can see. Judge Barron graduated from Hamilton College in 1964, then served as an officer in the United States Navy for four years. Graduating from Emory Law School, he's a member of both the Delaware and the uh, Georgia Bar Associations. In 1980, Judge Barron was confirmed as Delaware's first chief magistrate. His primary goal is to improve justice at the Justice of the Peace Court level. Commendable. Norm, how are you? Good, Bob. Norm, uh, things have changed quite a bit in the Justice of the Peace Court system under um, your reigns, and uh, you take, should take a lot of credit for that. Well, I take that as a compliment. Uh, I think there has been uh, changes, and I think uh, we're on the right road. Uh, I see improvement uh, as the months go by, and uh, I think we're going to see a little more improvement. I think so, too. What, what is the jurisdiction for the Justice of the Peace Courts? I, it's a court I know where people can go in and deal with it themselves. Uh, tell us about that. It's really rather extensive, Bob. Uh, we have jurisdiction over most misdemeanors almost every traffic offense, all violations, uh, criminal cases in general, for example, last year uh, we had somewhere around 134,000 cases mm. filed in just the peace courts in the state. Additionally, we have jurisdiction up to uh, an amount of $1,500 over civil cases such as debt actions, contract actions, negligence cases dealing with personal property, all landlord-tenant cases in the state, so it's really rather extensive, and uh, a Just the Peace really has to know quite a bit of law. Just the Peace not only has to be a judge, has to be a lawyer, a social worker, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Uh, hmm. You know, and the interesting thing is probably the only court that someone's going to come in contact with, if it's uh, any court at all, would probably be the Justice of the Peace Court system. It's the court, it, it seems to me, that that uh, people can go and address the, their own grievances, and uh, that's an important function you're serving. I think it is. Uh, just by the, again, the statistics, uh, last year we had a total of 151,000 cases filed in our courts statewide, JP courts, hmm. far above any other court. How many Justice of the Peace courts are there statewide, and uh, how many Justice of the Peaces are there? All right. There's a, there are at present 19 just peace courts, including the newest court located at the multi-purpose criminal justice facility uh, at Gander Hill. There are 53 just the peace allotted by statute. There are presently 51 serving. Hmm. What training do these justices of the peace court get? They're not particularly attorneys, all of them. Well, we only have uh, somewhere around two or three uh, law graduates, uh, the 51 men and wo women who are presently serving as Just the Peace come from various backgrounds. Uh, they do not have to be lawyers. However, when they come on board, they are, they are given uh, training by the deputy chief magistrates, by myself. Uh, I issue periodic legal memoranda on various issues, and already I think we have over 100 of, of them. There are uh, seminars being conducted. Uh, in the near future, there will be an all-day seminar, for example, at the Delaware State Police Training Academy with Justice of the Peace participating with the state police, county police, city police, attorney general's office. Um, I can't remember his outfit, Jack Lemley from uh, the Bureau of Alcohol and Drug Abuse, for example, motor vehicle personnel. So uh, it's going to be an all-day thing, and it's a very important thing because it's on the new DOI law, which goes into effect on October 20th. That's been tightened up, and I'm glad to see it, Norm. It has been tightened up. It's a rather complex uh, and lengthy law. It's certainly going to take a lot of concentration and uh, application to have it effectively implemented, and I'm confident that it will be effectively implemented uh, through methods such as this all-day seminar at the uh, police academy. 
Norm, there was a lot of controversy swirling around the new justices of the Peace Court system that opened up at Gander Hill, and it's referred to uh, most of the times as the Gander Hill Project. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about that? Well, I think there was uh, some initial controversy. Uh, now that it's there, I think, frankly, that it's uh, one of the most attractive court um, rooms that Justice of the Peace have in the state. And it, in my personal view, is quite separated from the prison itself. Uh, that was a concern the public had. Well, the concern, and it's a valid concern, Bob, it was that um, we didn't want to have one system of justice for the poor people and they would be processed through Gander Hill, and then the uh, more fortunate would be processed through the courthouse, say, at, uh, on Rodney Square. But as it's turning out, uh, private practitioners are going down to the facility at Gander Hill, um, several cases. So, so I don't think that these initial fears of a two-tiered system of justice are actually panning out. And I see a lot of good use for the uh, Court 18 at the Multipurpose Criminal Justice Facility. I see quicker case disposition. You have a deputy attorney general there. You have a public defender there. You have a, a pre-trial services officer. Many cases that have been processed as a felony, for example, an assault second degree. Um, the police officer will talk to the deputy AG. The deputy AG will talk to the public defender. The public defender will talk to his client the defendant, and because of this particular fact situation, maybe the case will be pled out right there mm -hmm. uh, at its init initial entry level at Court 18 as a uh, assault third misdemeanor, for example. That's good, because therefore you're getting a quicker service of justice to the defendants coming through, and that's, that's a goal that uh, is commendable. Now, the jurisdiction, of course, you deal with criminal matters occurring outside the city limits, correct? Well, we uh, actually have concurrent jurisdiction misdemeanors uh, with the Court of Common Pleas for outside the city, but we also have concurrent jurisdiction for those same misdemeanors committed in the city with the Municipal Court of the City of Wilmington. I see. Uh, and you're open all night, or what are your hours? At the present time, we're open uh, normal working hours, eight to four, six days a week, including Saturday. At the end of the year, or in the beginning of 1983, we'll be going 16 hours, and I'm sure eventually it'll be a 24-hour court. What's in the future for the Justice of the Peace Court system? Well, I see, uh, I see an increased jurisdictional uh, level for civil cases. We've just had an expansion in the Court of Common Pleas from $5,000 to $15,000. And I see next year perhaps a uh, increase from the $1,500 jurisdictional level for just the peace courts up to $2,500, perhaps $3,000. Well, thank you very much, Norm. This has been Norm Barron. He's the Chief Magistrate of the Justice of the Peace Court System. He's come on to give us some invaluable, invaluable information about this very important court system throughout.